Hey there, this is Peter, and welcome to another Take a Break with ValleyCAD. So when I was learning how to use SOLIDWORKS and other CAD softwares or designing practices and so forth, I remember being in college and the professor would have a book, right? And they'll have examples of how you might draw something. Well, this is an example of that. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have a picture and it's actually two cylinders coming in and merging into each other, kind of like this. So it makes like a cross for you. And figure out how do we work with the voids that are coming inside and how they intersect with each other. And actually we're gonna utilize a feature called intersect command. And that's utilizing a solid modeling approach. And then we're also gonna come in and use surface modeling as well. So hopefully this will give you some ideas of how you can model something, especially if you've got stuff that are kind of crossing over each other, right? So get your favorite cup of coffee or tea, and I'll see you in SOLIDWORKS in just a click. Hey there, welcome to Sol... Oh, that's not SOLIDWORKS, that's just a 2D picture. Well, anyways, this is a picture that we're gonna be referencing when we are modeling inside of SOLIDWORKS. So before we hop into SOLIDWORKS, uh, what we need to do is verify how our dimensions are placed and also what sort of orientation are we gonna make our model? These are the things that I always tell students to look at prior to just hopping in there and try to model this thing up, right? You gotta come up with a game plan. So the first thing to look at is how do you wanna orientate this part? So as we look at this here, I wanna set up this front face here that has a 38 millimeter diameter to be on my front plane. Then I'm gonna set up the one that has a 52 millimeter diameter on my right plane. Now, as we look at this here, you'll notice that it has a 126 and a 152 there. Now that 152, I'm not really sure what that's calling out. It doesn't make much sense to me. Um, so what I'm gonna be looking at here, I'm just gonna take liberty on this um, and we're gonna set it up to where the distance on our 38 millimeter hole is gonna be 152 millimeters. Okay, so make a little note on that there. All right, so let's make this picture a little bit smaller. And before we do that, one other thing that I always note to people is model it as you see it. Okay, what I mean by that is look at how the dimensions are set up in this model. I am not gonna come in here and go, okay, I'm gonna create a circle like that. And then that circle is gonna be 52 millimeters. And then from there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw another circle and um, I'm gonna offset that. Uh, um, no, actually, I'm gonna start off with the outside circle and I need to know what the diameter of that. So I need to do 12 plus 52 plus 12. Okay, 72 and a half, right? I don't want to sit there and try to do math on it. Model it as you see it, okay? So I'm gonna make this picture a little bit smaller and we're gonna hop into SOLIDWORKS to work through this thing. All right, so as we work through this, um, what we're gonna look at first is utilizing solid modeling and utilizing the intersect command. All right, so coming in here, I wanna start off on my right plane and we're gonna simply come up to boss base extrude and then from there, we're gonna create a circle. But time out. I'm getting a little too excited here. As I'm looking at this, I need to make sure I'm in the right units. As we look at that picture there above my head, right? Those measurements are actually in millimeter. What's wrong with my part file right now is that I'm in standard mode or inches, IPS. So if I look in the bottom right corner of my screen, you'll see IPS, it's right below me, you know, kind of like, like right there, right? So what we wanna do is click on that. And I'm gonna switch to MMGS. Now you could do this while you're in the middle of your model. The problem is that when you do that, it does get you out of your sketch command that you are currently in. Not a big deal. We'll come in here, we'll select our right plane. I can push letter S for shortcut key, select boss base extrude. Since boss base extrude is a sketch based feature, automatically creates a sketch for me. Awesome. So we'll come in here, let's draw a simple circle like so. I'm using a mouse gesture for that. And then from there, push escape. And then from there, we're gonna smart dimension this guy, once again, using mouse gestures. And I'm gonna set this up as a 52 millimeter diameter. All right. So now from there, what we're gonna do is push the letter D as in dog to accept this sketch to get out. Now get me into my boss base extrusion. So then from there, as we model this, I see a 126 in my overall distance. So I'm gonna set this up instead of being blind, I'm gonna do a mid plane and we'll set this up at 126. Perfect. Now, as I'm going at this, I'm not gonna come in later and do like a shell feature or anything like that because this part, 
I, I know what the inside diameter is, but I need that to be the, the, the removed section, right? That needs to be the hole. What I'm gonna implement is thin feature. And then with that, I'm gonna set up so that it's on a one direction, you know, be like Harry Styles. And we're gonna make so that the material goes to the outside. And our distance on that is 12 millimeters. Done. So then from there, I can say okay to that. And then that creates a pipe for me. Cool deal, huh? Now what we're gonna do from there is come in on our front plane and we'll simply come in, push a, um, the S key again on my front plane. And we'll simply do a boss base extrude again there. From there, we're gonna create a circle again. Then we're gonna create a dimension from that. And that dimension is gonna be at a 38 millimeter diameter. And then from there, I'm gonna push a letter D to accept that. And once again, we're gonna come in and do a boss base extrude mid plane. And this time we're gonna make this 152 millimeters to match what's kind of in this picture that we have here, right? So we'll say 152. Now, one thing to note here is I'm gonna uncheck merge results. Okay, so what we're actually gonna do is make two separate solid bodies here. Then from there, we're gonna come in, say thin feature, and this time it's gonna be a 13 millimeter offset. Perfect. Now from there, we'll say okay. So now we have two boss base extrusions, but I have two solid bodies. So whenever you have two separate bodies that are not merged to each other, what we can do now is implement what's called the intersect command. So intersect, it's under our features tab. You come over here towards the center and it's this little icon right here. So when you do intersect, what's happening is SOLARX is gonna look where everything is like hitting each other or going into each other. And you could say, hey, I wanna create an intersection on regions, internal regions, or both. So I'm gonna say both. And when you're doing an intersect command, as you can see here, you could click on surfaces, solid bodies, or planes. So in this scenario, we got bodies. So I'm gonna click on these two cylinders and then right click. You'll see here at SOLIDWORKS list out all of my regions. So what I wanna do is come through here and as I click, it removes them for me. I'm gonna click on these two faces too. And then from there, right click. And you'll see that SOLIDWORKS comes in and it hollows out the two bodies for me. Pretty quick and easy, right? That took us about, I don't know, six minutes to do, six and a half minutes, not too bad. But now let's look at the other way of modeling this. All right, so the other way of modeling this is using surface modeling. So I already set up the two circles here for my front and right plane uh, extrusion. So we're gonna utilize sketch number one there. And from here, we're gonna use our surface modeling techniques. We're gonna say extrude surface. With that selected, what we wanna do is say be a mid plane on that. And from there, we're gonna set this up at 126 millimeters, right? And from there, we'll say, okay. Now, what we wanna do next is come in on sketch number two, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say, let's do a extruded surface in a scenario mid plane. And this one, because of the picture that we have, we're gonna make it at 152 millimeters. And we'll simply say, okay, again. So as we look at this, you'll see that we are intersecting each other and we can't see through that. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come in and use the mutual trim. So you've probably seen some of our other videos where we did some trimming and I showed you how to use standard trim. We're gonna look at mutual trim here. So with mutual trim selected, it's like these two surface bodies like so, I wanna remove section. I wanna click here and I wanna click here and then rotate here and have it click all the way through. From there, we'll simply say, okay. So. I know that when surfaces are connected to each other, because having a blue edge means that they're not connected. But whenever you see a black edge, it means that it is connected. So now we have them connected there. We'll just come in here and we'll say thicken surface, right? Okay, so thicken surface, let's see here. If I come in here, I'll see your thicken, 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 thicken. Oh yeah, that's right, thicken right there, huh? Click on that. Now, if I say let's do thicken, I'll click on here. Okay, it's going to the outside and I need 12 millimeters here, right? Oh, but wait, I need to have 13 millimeters here. So the thicken command will do a universal thicken. So sadly, thicken is not gonna work in this scenario. What we have to do is utilize a command called offset surface. So with offset surface selected here, what we can do is specify the surfaces that we wanna have offsetted out. So let's simply say be 13 millimeters on that one and say, okay. All right, cool. And then we're gonna come in here and push enter and we're gonna make this so it's 12 and we're gonna base it off of this one here. And then simply say, okay again. 
Now by doing this, you'll see that we are having some intersections again. Okay, not a big deal. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna trim away some of these surfaces. So we'll come in here to trim surface and then from here we want a mutual between these surfaces here like so. We're gonna say remove section. So the first one we wanna remove is here and we wanna remove it here. Now we gotta be careful because we also need to remove it here and also over here. Because if we didn't do that, SolidWorks would see that surface continue on and it wouldn't actually show a black edge here. So now we trim that away and we're looking really good again. Okay, so now that we have that set up, what we need to do is now cap off each of these cylinders here. So the one that we can use here is actually called planar surface. With that, you just simply click on your two boundaries like so, and SolidWorks will cap it off for me. Do that again here. Great, rotate around, we'll just simply click through again. The other thing I could have done was a mirror bodies, but in this scenario, since I'm already in the motion of creating my surfaces, we'll just simply say great to that. From there, now I have everything set up, I'm still in a surface body mode. As you can see in my design tree, it says surface bodies six on there. This is called SolidWorks, right? So I actually need to convert this into a solid geometry. So from here, what we're gonna do is say, let's knit these surfaces to each other. I'm gonna do a simple window that grabs everything. We're gonna create a solid and merge entities from there. Say okay to that. And there's my final part. Now this part and my other one look like identical to each other, but look how many features it took to make this one compared to my other one. Let's see here. I did a couple takes on this one, as you can see. But as we see here, extruded thin one and two only took three features to make the part as compared to coming in here and having to make, you know, a total of, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 features. Wow, that takes a lot. So hopefully you got something pretty cool and seeing how I might go about modeling this part here and showing you the two different ways of doing it. So if you are enjoying these videos, please click that thumbs up button. Also click subscribe so you get notified. So my name is Peter. Thanks again for enjoying your cup of coffee while you're taking a break with ValleyCAD. Have a great rest of the day and make sure you learn something new.